So uh, we're in 15.6, we're talking about surface integrals. So along, so line integrals, Green's theorem, and then surface integrals have to do with the divergence theorem and Stokes theorem. So those are the those are kind of the big four ideas from chapter 15, the 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 main the main things, the most important things that we're trying to trying to get out of out of chapter 15. Um, so when we talked about parametric surfaces, if we have a parametric surface. And we said our parametric surface was, we notated as r of u and v. Uh, and it had a normal vector. The normal vector was the cross product of the first partial derivatives. Normal vector is going to play a big role in surface integrals. So this cross product gave us our normal vector. And our surface differential, the small element of surface, little piece of surface we called, we said ds, was the magnitude of the cross product times uh, du dv. And we found, we used this to find surface area. And our integral for surface area, so we're just kind of recapping the last, what we did in the last section. Our surface area S was the double integral over our region of the magnitude of this cross product in the UV plane. And we, we're going to relate this to what, how we define the line integral. So this is, our, this is our surface area. Our integrand is our little element of surface. And we're integrating over our region. Now our line integral we defined as the integral over our curve of f of x. And we're doing the line, in, this is the line integral of a scalar function f of x ds, and we interpreted this as maybe the mass of, of a wire in the shape of our, of our curve, and we're f of x y is the density function, so this would give us our mass. So we defined this as the integral from a to b of f of r of t times the magnitude of r prime dt, where r prime, where r is the parameter, parametric equation of our curve. So this is, this is our function multiplied by our little length of, little section of arc length, and we're summing that along the curve. So this is how we defined our line integral. We're going to do something similar with a surface integral. So with a surface integral, this is our integral of a little element of surface. And we want to sum the value of a function times that little element of surface over the entire surface. So the same, same kind of idea. So we have a function. So for surface integrals, we have a function f of x, y, z. And we want to multiply this times the small increment of area, the small piece of area. So we're multiplying this by ds. And we're summing over the surface.
I'm not going to go through the, the entire argument again, but we can we could talk about the, the function the, at the ith little piece of surface and the, the area of the ith piece of surface is the magnitude of the cross product at, at point uv at a particular point and we're going to sum that over the surface take the limit as delta u and delta v go to zero and we get our surface integral. We've, we've done that argument several times but the idea is we're summing the value of the function at a particular point times the little piece of area on the surface at that point and we're summing those over the entire surface. So we're going to define our surface integral. And this is our surface integral of a scalar function. as the double integral over our surface of f of x, y, z ds and we're going to evaluate this by taking the double integral over the region of f of r of u and v, so our function expressed in terms of our parameters times the magnitude of the cross product of our first partials which is our little increment of surface area times du dv. And r is our region in the uv plane. So let's, let's make, I'm just going to make this explicit, what we're talking about here. F of R of U and V is F expressed in terms of our parameter, uh, parameters U and V, So we express our function in terms of our parameters. ds is this increment of surface and r is the region in the uv plane. Now if we have a function, we, we worked with, we did some work with parametric surfaces where we had our function expressed in terms of u and v as, as a parametric, as a vector equation of u and v. If we have a more familiar function, if we have our function expressed in terms of x and y, so if, we, if we're working with z is some function of x and y, then this takes a little more familiar form. So if if z is some function g of x, y, that's our surface, then ds, which we've talked about before, then our increment, our little piece of area is the square root of g sub x squared plus g sub y squared plus 1. dy dx or dx dy and this is our region in the x, x y plane and we can express we can say that f of x y z so this is our function that we're evaluating our surface integral over uh, is f of x y and g of x, y. 
So we just put, we substitute in our function for z into, into our function that we're, that we're interested in evaluating our surface integral over. So this is, this is how we would set our, our integral up if we have z as a function of x and y. One way we can interpret this surface integral is, I'm just going to go back here, just to give it an interpretation. If we think of f of x, y, z as a, as a density function, mass, in this case it would be mass per unit area. So f of x, y, z could be a mass per unit area, and we want the mass of some thin surface. So the surface is made of a very thin sheet, and f of x, y, z gives us the mass per unit area. We're summing that mass over the surface, so that would give us the mass of this, this thin sheet of surface. That's one way we could interpret this surface integral of a scalar function. So questions on, on how we set this up, what we're, what we're doing here. All right, let's look at a couple of examples. Some of these examples can get uh, a, little, a little involved, so fair warning. So we want to evaluate the integral over our surface of x minus 2y plus z ds. And our surface is given by z equals 15 minus 2x plus 3y for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2 and 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 4. So our region, what is our region in the xy plane here? A rectangle, right. x goes from 0 to 2, y goes from 0 to 4. So our region in the xy plane is a rectangle. Everything here is expressed in terms of x and y, so we, we're not working with the parametric form of our surface, we're working with the explicit form of our surface, so where our region is going to be in the xy plane. And our function, we have z equals g of xy, so this is our, this is our function for our surface, z equals g of xy. So our, our surface integral is going to take Whoops, this form. This is, this is our increment of area, and our, we'll express our function in terms, of, in terms of x and y. So we need to, to evaluate our surface integral. We need our partial derivatives of our function. This is our, this is our function of x, y, z. That's the function we're integrating over. So if we think of this function as giving the the mass per unit area of this surface, this double integral would give us the mass of this little thin sheet of surface. And I'm just going to make a note here, this is g of xy in terms of what we said before. All right, so we need our, we need our partial derivatives. So g sub x equals what? Negative 2. g sub y is 3. So our ds, our increment of area, a little piece of area, is going to be the square root of um, 4 plus 9 plus 1 equals the square root of 14. Uh, and we have dy dx. So there's our ds. And before we go any further, what, what is this surface? Plane. This is a plane. So we have a plane, and we're integrating this function over this plane. All right. Our function, f, we want f of x, y, z. We're integrating with respect to y and x, x and y. So we don't want the z in here. So we're going to use this to give us our z. So our function of x, y, and z, or of x and y is just going to be 
x minus 2y plus this whole thing, plus 15 minus 2x plus 3y. That's z on my surface. So my function that we're integrating ends up to be minus x plus y plus 15. So this, we can see now that this is going to be a pretty easy, pretty easy integral to evaluate. So we have the double integral, and we're going from x equals uh, 0 to y equals 0 to 2, x equals 0 to 4. I'm going to go, since this is a nice region, it doesn't matter which order I put it in, uh, minus x plus y plus 15 times the square root of 14. And I'm doing, in this order, I pick dx dy. So a nice, easy integral to evaluate. We evaluate that out, and we get 128 times the square root of 14. So our procedure, double integrals. First, before I, before I say anything, any questions on what we did there? So when we have our function of x, y, and z, we want to, we want to find our ds by taking the partials. First partial, g, g sub x and g sub y of our surface. Our surface is going to be given by z equals some function of x and y. Plug it into our, our radical for our, for our area element. And we express our function, the function that we're integrating, in terms of x and y by plugging in whatever we get here for z. And then we do our integral. Now, sometimes our region, our region might not be quite as simple. We'll do an example of that in a little bit. This one turned out to be nice and easy. So let's, let's do, we'll, our next example is going to be a, a surface integral where, our, where we're given a parametric surface rather than an explicit surface. So for this one, we, we, have, we want to evaluate the double integral, our surface integral of x, x plus y. ds, where s is given to us by parametric equations. 2 cosine ui plus 2 sine uj uh, plus v k. For 0 less than or equal to u less than or equal to pi over 2, and 0 less than or equal to v less than or equal to 2. So here's our surface. Here's our function. So when we have a parametric surface, we our, our area, our increment, a little piece of area is given to us by the cross products of the first partials of our of our surface. So we need our cross product, the magnet, and then we take the magnitude of our cross product. So r sub u. First partial with respect to u. Minus sine 2 sine u i, 2 cosine u j, our partial with respect to v is just k. We need to take our cross product, So we have our determinant i, j, k, and we have minus 2 sine u, 2 cosine u, and 0, and 0, 0, 1 here. And when we get our cross product, we end up with, when we evaluate that, we get 2 cosine u, i. 
plus 2 sine uj, and our magnitude, which is what we need for our vector, for our scalar surface integral, is 2. And our function, f, our function is x plus y. So we need our function I'm just going to label this. This is our function of f, x and y. So our function of x and y expressed in terms of u and v is going to be 2 cosine u plus 2 sine u. So our parameter says x is 2 cosine u and y equals 2 sine u. So our function, we're expressing our function in terms of our parameter. So now we're ready to take our double integral, our, surf, our surface integral. So we have the double integral. And I'm going to do 0 to pi over 2 here and 0 to 2. We have 2 cosine u plus 2 sine u times 2. And our order here is dv du. Um, because they give us a nice a nice region here, it doesn't we don't it's not varying between any functions, so it doesn't matter. Our order order doesn't change our integral. And we evaluate this out. When we evaluate this, this uh, another easy integral to evaluate that comes out to be 16. So when we have a parametric surface. Our procedure, we have to find the cross, cross product of the first partials of our parametric surface um, and take the magnitude. The magnitude gives us our magnitude times du dv gives us our increment of area. And then we have to express our function in terms of our parameters, expressing the function in terms of the parameters. And then we integrate over the region in the UV plane. Questions on that example? <coughs> All right, this next example, there are, I think there are three problems like this next one in your, in your homework assignment. This one takes a little more, this one is, takes a little more effort. There's a lot of, lot of setup going on in this, in this next problem. But uh, and there are several, several in your homework problem, in your homework set. So we want to evaluate. The integral, the surface integral of f of x, y, z, ds. And our function our function is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Our surface is given by z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. But we have another, another constraint here. x minus 1 squared plus y squared less than or equal to 1. So looking at the form of our functions and our surface, uh, what are we going to guess is going to be the best, the easiest way to evaluate our, the integral that we end up with? Polar. Polar, because we have these square roots of x squareds, y squareds, and z squareds. All right, so let's look at what this, what this piece about our surface is telling us. First off, it tells us that our surface is z equals square root of x squared plus y squared. What is that surface? Sphere, I see here sphere and cone. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, if I square both sides, I get z squared equals x squared plus y squared. That's a cone. So this is a cone. Well, what, what is this, this x minus 1 squared plus y squared less than or equal to 1? That's a circle in the xy plane. So what is, what is this telling us about our, our, our problem? So we, you're, we're very close. So our, our surface is a cone, but we're bounded by x minus 1 squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1 in the xy plane. So we're looking at the portion of the cone that's above this circle in the xy plane. So we're taking the surface integral of this function on the cone that's above this circle in the xy plane. So we have some additional pieces that we need to take care of. This is our function, this is our surface, and this, is our, this gives us our bounds in our region of the xy plane. So this one, our, our double integral, is not going to be quite as simple because we're, we're, we're being bounded by this function in the xy plane. So we just don't, we don't have numbers for our bounds. We're going to have this function for our bounds. So let's set up our, our um, integral. So our cone, we, uh, I'm just going to write this as the portion of the cone above the circle in the xy plane. That's, that's our surface. So this is our surface, this is our bounds in our xy plane. So first we need, we need our, because we have an explicit form for our surface, we, we just need our partial derivatives to find our, our area, our element of area. So dz dx, I just, I'm writing our partial derivative in different notation here, it means the same thing. dz dx is x over square root of x squared plus y squared. And dz dy equals y over square root of x squared plus y squared. And our area element, ds, we have this big radical. x over square root of x squared plus y squared. And we're squaring that. And we have y over square root of x squared plus y squared. We're squaring that plus 1. And I'm going to say dy dx here. That's our element of area. I can simplify this radical. So here's our first, here's our first break. This radical simplifies nicely. If I find a common denominator here and I add my fractions, I end up with square root of 2 dy dx. So this simplifies. It looks intimidating, but it simplifies pretty nicely. Now we need to express f, our function, in terms of our surface. We want uh, f of x, y, z just in terms of x and y. We're, we're going to integrate in terms of x and y. So we're going to substitute in here for z. On our surface, z is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared. So z squared is just x squared plus y squared. So our function is just 2 x squared plus y squared. And I'm going to write that as I'm going to pull out the square root of 2. So now we have just about everything we need to evaluate our integral. We have everything that goes in our integral. We have our integrand. So let's write our integral. Is everybody, everybody with me so far 
in terms of what we're what we're integrating. Okay. So our surface integral has turned into the double integral over our region of square root of 2, square root of x squared plus y squared, times the square root of 2 uh, dA, where dA is dy dx or dx dy. Um, so we get the, uh, 2 times the integral over our region of square root of 2, I'm sorry, of square root of x squared plus y squared, dA. And our region, our region in the xy plane is x minus 1 squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. So we're inside this circle. So we said at the beginning we thought we would use polar coordinates here. So let's convert to polar coordinates. Let's convert our region. Our region gives us the bounds of our integral, of our integrals. So we need to, we need to come up with our region. So x is, we're going to use polar coordinates. x is our cosine theta, y is our sine theta. So we get um, r cosine theta minus 1 squared plus r squared sine squared theta is less than or equal to 1. I'm going to, I'm going to multiply this out and simplify. When I multiply this out and simplify, I end up with r squared minus 2r cosine theta less than or equal to 0. I'm going to factor out an r here. So r times r minus 2 cosine theta less than or equal to 0. What we're doing here is, is trying to figure out our region, how to express our region in the xy plane. Because if we, if we set up our integral with this as this is going to be one of the bounds of our integral in some form, that's going to be really difficult. So this, is, this gives us our region, r times r, r minus 2 cosine theta less than or equal to 0. Well, one solution of this, we don't, we don't want r equal to 0. We're not interested when r equals 0. So I'm just going to ignore this r out here. So if r equals 0, that's, that's going to give us our kind of the degenerate case. So I'm only interested in r minus 2 cosine theta less than or equal to 0. So r is less than or equal to 2 cosine theta. This is a circle. In the, this is our circle in the, in the xy plane. And this circle, this circle is traced out once from 0 to pi. So this gives us, this is our boundary. This is, this is equivalent to this condition in the xy plane. So our region is going to be this circle, and we, we only want to go around the circle once. That gives us our, our boundary. So this is traced once from 0 to pi. So finally, we can write our integral. So we had to set up our integral. We had to use this to find our boundary in the xy plane. So now we can set up our integral. So finally, we have 2 times the integral from 0 to pi. And r varies from 0 to 2 cosine theta. And I 
This, the two comes from our, that came from our D, DS increment. Let's go back here real quick and remind us what we had. Um, we had, did I go too far? Two times the square root of x squared plus y squared dA. In polar coordinates, the square root of x squared plus y squared is r. So our integrand is r times r, r dr d theta. And when we integrate this with respect to r, we're going to evaluate, uh, evaluate r squared, so we end up with 0 to pi. We're almost done of r r squared dr d theta. Whoops, I forgot my other integral. 0 to 2 cosine theta. So this gives me 2 thirds the integral, integral from 0 to pi of uh, 2 cosine theta. theta cubed d theta. 